What's going on everyone? How we doing today? It's your boy Retro. We're back today with another video in my top five series. And today we're going to be taking a look at arcade racers that were once in a cabinet that you can physically drive in at the arcade alley that was ported over to a console. Let's take a look. Welcome back to the channel y'all how we doing today my name is retro obsessed it's an obsession as always if you are new here thank you for stopping in if you are into all things retro from the 80s the 90s the early 2000s whether it's video games toys movies music all that good stuff all the nostalgia from that era go ahead do me a favor and hit that subscribe button for me guys and don't forget to hit that bell to be notified of my new videos coming out every other friday for you so you don't miss them if you are hearing any noise in the background i apologize right now we are getting to the summertime here in southern california i live in bakersfield and there's a reason why they call it bake it's been 100 degrees for the past couple weeks straight and this week is going to be between 110 and 114 degrees. Uh, three days out of this week, it's gonna be a hot one. That's why I decided to do this video right now on a Sunday night instead of Monday afternoon. That way the sun has went down, it's cooled down a little, maybe 15, 20 degrees. It's still about 90 degrees, it's still warm. I'm drinking my ice cold Mike's Hard Seltzer. I got a little fan on me, so if you do hear the fan, I apologize right now. I'm not turning that damn thing off. You're gonna have to deal with it, guys. Y'all, we are getting ever so close to that 1,000 subscriber mark that I can taste it. I can definitely taste it. It tastes like lemonade. Guys, do me a favor, subscribe, hit the bell to be notified, share my channel, share my videos, do anything and everything you can to get my videos out there. I swear, YouTube hates me, YouTube hates my channel, YouTube does not put my video in any kind of algorithm. I'm doing daily uh, uploads uh, on my shorts. I'm doing gameplay videos. So I've basically been having a single video uploaded every single day for the past two weeks. And I think I gained maybe five subscribers, if that. So I cannot do this without you guys. Please, please help me out. Share my information, like the video. Don't like the video if you don't, it doesn't bother me because it actually helps the video and it helps the algorithm. So do what you guys can, I appreciate it. Once I get to that 1,000 subscriber mark, I will be doing a hashtag 1K giveaway what? where I'm gonna be filling up a box full of retro nostalgic stuff from the 80s and 90s, uh, video games, movies, VHS, DVDs, music CDs from the 80s and 90s, all the video games, some toys, maybe some pogs, uh, all the stuff that we grew up on, I will be throwing a whole bunch of it into a box and one winner will be winning that all. Um, it's not gonna be split up or anything. One winner takes all. Uh, once I get to that 1,000 subscribers and the 4K watch hours and I get monetized, the second I get monetized, I will make a follow-up video saying, hey, I'm monetized, guys. Let me know if you wanna be in the giveaway and all you gotta do is in the comments put hashtag 1K giveaway, not right now, once I get there. It's probably gonna be a little while. I'm pretty much at a standstill right now. I am currently, as I'm making this video, 952 subscribers. I'm really, really close. 45 subscribers and I'm there, guys. Please, please help me out. You know, while you're at work, while you're uh, gaming, go ahead and open up YouTube, open up my videos, put them on random and play all. Mute that some bitch and just let the videos roll, guys. The, the watch hours are what's killing me right now. I'm only at two, 2K watch hours. I need 4,000. I'm getting there. Help me out. And it seems like every month my watch hours will go up to almost 3,000 and all of a sudden the next month they'll drop down to like 1.9. I don't know what's going on. I don't understand that deal at all. Like I said, it's going for anywhere from 1.9 all the way up to 3.0 and then back down. I don't understand that at all. If anyone please uh, can let me know what's going on with the hours, I greatly appreciate it. I cannot do it without you guys. Please help me out, share my stuff so I can achieve my goal to get monetized. That's why we're all here. Yes, I love to create content for you guys to watch, but at the same time, most people do YouTube so they can try to make money, hence the monetization. All right, with all that stuff out of the way, let's get into today's video. Today, we're gonna be taking a look at my top five favorite racing games that were once a favorite as ours in an arcade. And we're talking about arcade cabinets, driving ones that you can get in, sit down, hang on, shut up 
insert quarters, and go for the ride of your lifetime. If you were lucky enough to have an arcade room or an arcade bar or anything like that when you were growing up, then kudos to you. I didn't. I lived in a town of 5,000 people. We didn't have much. Basically, my arcade room was inside a Pizza Hut, which is awesome. They used to have, you know, Wild Guns, you know, Cruise in USA, Rush, all that good stuff. And those other games I remember as a child growing up and playing. And to this day, I still play them. I haven't found any recently set, sitting ones, especially with everything going on. All the arcades and everything have been closed. Uh, my city does have a few arcade rooms and arcade bars, but everything's been closed for the last year. Everything's going to be opening up pretty soon. As of, I think, uh, June 15th, California will be 100% open, uh, which is awesome. So whether you are inside of a Pizza Hut or a round table pizza waiting for your hot, fresh pizza to come out of the oven, you were over there, you were playing those games, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm pretty sure any one of you at one point sat down and probably either one, if not all of these games and slapped a couple quarters in them and played them to your heart desires or until your pizza was done. And these are my top five games that were ported to console. Let's check it out. First up, we have San Francisco Rush Extreme Racing for the Nintendo 64, very underrated. Let's check it out. San Francisco Rush Extreme Racing was developed and published by Atari Games for the arcade cabinets and was ported to the Nintendo 64 in 1997 and for the PlayStation 1. They then realized instead they would have to craft an alternate version of the city that was more fun. The new tracks included in the Rock Alcatraz edition were actually designed for the Nintendo 64 version of the game with the exception of the Alcatraz track. The game contains six tracks with two of them containing secret stunt courses plus one hidden track. Most of all the original cars from the arcade appeared in the ported version as well. San Francisco Rush Extreme Racing Absolutely love this game. Really, really fun. Not as fun as some of the other ones I'm going to be posting up, but a really good one for sure. Check it out. San Francisco Rush. Let me know in the comments below if you guys have ever played this one in the arcade. Next up in my top five is an absolute blast of a game. I used to love playing this one. I specifically remember this game inside a round table pizza. Uh, our arcade was very, very slim. It was maybe like three feet wide by maybe 12 feet long and I only had one, two, three, four, five games and a quarter machine. That was it. And one of them was Hydro Thunder. Absolutely love this game. Uh, amazing graphics, amazing gameplay. You can't get much more better than this for a boat style racing game. Check it out. Hydro Thunder. Hydro Thunder is an inshore powerboat racing video game, originally an arcade game and later released for the Sega Dreamcast as a launch title in 1999. It was also released for PlayStation 1 and Nintendo 64 in early 2000. Hydro Thunder Hurricane, a sequel to Hydro Thunder, was later released for the Xbox 360 in July 2010 on Xbox Live Arcade. Gameplay of Hydro Thunder consists of racing high-tech speedboats throughout treacherous environments from the cold seas of the Arctic Circle to a post-apocalyptic version of New York City. The boats in Hydro Thunder are divided into four categories, easy, medium, hard, and bonus. The easy boats are easier to handle, but a lot slower. Whereas the hard boats are way faster, but much more difficult to control. It's your decision on what type of boat you want to use. Just like the boats, the tracks are also categorized into four classes, easy, medium, hard, and bonus. Yeah, Hydro Thunder, PS1, absolutely blast to play this game i love it i love the graphics i love the music you know for the time being at least it was really great um i have yet to get the nintendo 64 or the dreamcast version because they're getting pretty pretty pricey i am trying to find them though so if anyone has a good hookup um, on the dreamcast and nintendo 64 version let me know gray cart or blue cart either or um but i do want to call it you know collect them both obviously but if anyone has the has the hookup on that dreamcast 64 let me know guys, I appreciate it. It's gonna go right into the collection. Up next on the list is another 64 game and one of the best arcade racers that there was ever made. And that ladies and gentlemen is Cruising USA. Cruising, yeah. Let's check it out. Cruising USA is an arcade racing game originally released in 1994 for the arcades. Developed, published, and distributed by Midway Games, it is the first game in the series and features set in the locations across the entire United States of America. 
Along with Killer Instinct, Cruising USA was originally planned as a launch title for the Nintendo 64, but neither of the two games were actually at the N64 launch. The arcade version of this game was critically and commercially successful, actually outselling Sega's Daytona USA, but the ported version for the Nintendo 64 actually received poor reviews, which personally, I like Cruising USA more than I like San Francisco Rush. There, I said it, you can fight me. During gameplay, players choose between seven different cars. Tracks in the game are based off of real locations across the United States, running from the Golden Gate Park in San Francisco, all the way ending to Washington, D.C. Cruising USA, badass game, love this one. Let me know if you guys have played this game in the arcade or in real life. I actually just got done beating this game uh, on stream, actually, on my Twitch uh, last week on my Throwback Thursday Retro Racing Days, where I do a lot of uh, retro games on my Twitch. I actually beat Cruising USA and Cruising World in the same night. Uh, that was really, really cool. And I actually do not remember actually uh, beating those games when I was a kid. And it was actually, it took no time at all. Uh, yeah. Super, super awesome game. Absolutely love this one. On to the next one. Alrighty, up next in my top five is an insanely fun, addictive, very lifelike game for the time at least. And that happens to be for the Sega Saturn, a truly underrated system. And that game is none other than Daytona USA by Sega Sports. Awesome, awesome game. Let's go. Daytona USA is an arcade racing game developed and published by Sega AM2 in 1993 and released for the ported version to the Sega Saturn in 1995. Inspired by NASCAR, Sega aimed to outperform Namco's very successful Ridge Racer. The developers researched motorsports extensively. They used satellite imagery and photography to map Daytona International Speedway. And with their experience with virtual racing in 1992, that also helped them with lighting and camera control. Visual effects include texture filtering and texture mapping, 60 frames per second frame rate, and four different camera perspectives as well making Daytona USA one of the best aesthetically pleasing games there was for the time being. Daytona USA was a critical and commercial success, praised for its graphics, soundtrack, and realism. Simply put, Daytona USA was an influential game in the racing genre and has been frequently named one of the best video games of all times. Daytona USA, Sega Saturn, a true masterpiece if you ask me, in my honest opinion, one of the best racing games ever made. And what do you think about Daytona USA? Let me know down below, guys. All right, everyone, we are down to the last game, my top and my favorite game in this series. I'm gonna go ahead and let you guys know right now. And it was also my all-time favorite arcade game growing up as a kid. I would not and could not get out of this arcade for the life of me. I had quarters piled all the way to the monitor because I knew I was going to be there for hours playing this game. And as always, I will give you guys a few seconds to just sit back, relax, have a drink, and think what game I'm going to mention for my top game in the series. What do you think? You give up and my favorite ported racing game from the arcade to the console is pause for effect that's right crazy taxi ported over to the sega dreamcast let's go let's check it out yeah hey hey come on over have some fun with crazy taxi yeah 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 Crazy Taxi is a series of racing video games that was developed by hitmakers and published by Sega. The game first appeared in arcades in 1999 and was extremely successful, prompting Sega to port the arcade version to their Dreamcast console in 2000. It is the third best-selling Dreamcast game in the United States, selling over 1 million copies alone. This game was later ported to the PlayStation 2 and Nintendo GameCube and the PC, with sequels appearing on the Xbox, Game Boy Advance, and the PSP systems as well. Each game and port has the player assume the role of a taxi driver who must accumulate money by delivering passengers to their destinations in the fastest time possible. 
earning tips by performing crazy stunts before the time runs out. The franchise has actually been recognized for its innovative gameplay design, which is easy to learn but difficult to master. Through the series, the cities used within the Crazy Taxi games were influenced by real world cities, including San Francisco, Los Angeles, New York City and Las Vegas. This is also one of the most prominent examples of product placements in video gaming history, including real world businesses including Pizza Hut, Kentucky Fried Chicken, Fila Shoes, and Tower Records, just to name a few. But these establishments have been replaced with generic businesses in later games due to licensing issues. There has also been two attempts to create a movie based off of the hit game in 2001 and 2003, but unfortunately was stalled due to an absence of plot elements. Simply put, they couldn't come up with a good enough plot to create an entire movie with. Crazy Taxi on the Sega Dreamcast, an absolutely beautiful game to play, amazing graphics for the time, amazing soundtrack, uh, real life uh, areas and cities and buildings, just an all around fun, fun game. Well y'all, there you have it. There is my top five favorite games that were once an arcade classic Port it over to console. Let me know in the comments below what your favorite game from the series was. If you happen to play them currently, if you played them as a kid growing up in the arcades or on the console, let me know down below. I would really like to hear from y'all. Thank you everyone for watching the video. I greatly appreciate it. If you are new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell to be notified of my new videos coming out every other Friday for you so you don't miss it. Make sure to find me across all platforms, all social media. I am on basically every single thing you can think of. I'm on Facebook, I'm on TikTok, I'm doing TikToks now. I'm on Snapchat, I'm not on that very often, but I'm on there. I'm on Twitch, I stream regularly uh, between two to four days a week, whether it's iRacing, Gran Turismo, uh, Retro Thursdays, I have a Throwback Thursday where I do only retro games. I do other games as well. Uh, if you want to if you want to hop on the Twitch train, go over to twitch.tv slash retro obsessed. Find me on there. As always, do not forget to hit up my sponsors down below. We got HyperX Gaming, uh, amazing uh, gaming accessories. We got mice, we got keyboards, we got uh, nice mats down below, all RGB. We got memory, SSD, a little bit of anything and everything. Go also hit up my other sponsors, Raise Energy Drinks, American Bubble Boy, and No Name Nerd Gaming. Awesome, awesome stuff. I will have direct links down below. You guys check them out. There's also coupon codes and promo codes down there to save you between 10 to 20%, if not more. I also have Amazon affiliate links down below for stuff that I use for my streaming, stuff that I use for my for my YouTube, uh, lighting, cameras, uh, pr editing software, all that good stuff, all my tripods, all that stuff down below that I personally use down below. Uh, go ahead and click on the links and buy stuff that you're already looking to buy anyway. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything more and it helps out the channel. All of the money, all the proceeds that come from this channel, that come from my Twitch, go right back into the channel. Nothing goes in my pocket. It is all put right back into the channels. I greatly appreciate it, guys. I am Retro Obsessed. It's an obsession. Have a good one, y'all, and be safe out there. Salud. Ah.